Hello and welcome to Monday Motivation. I was going to take you to the beach at Agnes Waters today, but it was blowing a gale. So I'm actually up here in the um, in a car park with, I've got a nice view instead of the woods behind me. There's some beautiful walks through there, but it was a bit noisy on the beach, I'm afraid. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about um, three sort of basic rules of training and how to judge a, a training method or a system or anything you come across as to whether or not you it's something you want to do with your horse. The reason I want to talk about this is that I often get told by people that the reason they haven't done any training with their horse is because they didn't want to do it wrong and they didn't want to ruin him and they didn't know how to judge the training system itself and I can understand that that um, you know you don't want to do more harm than good so to speak but do you know if you're the sort of person that's here listening to my Facebook live I'm gonna probably trust that you're not the sort of person that's gonna go out and do something dreadful to your horse so let's start with that um, the fact that you're interested in your horse's welfare and you're wanting to train your own horse you're taking responsibility for training your horse which I think is an essential ethical thing to do then I don't think you're the sort of person that is going to ruin the horse however there are a few things you can do to quickly assess a training system to know whether or not you should give it a try and John Lyons actually had three basic training rules that he used to assess things. Now, I quite like the first two. I think the third one can be misinterpreted at times. There's also the um, ISIS training principles. Now, there's 10 training principles there that you can um, assess your training method or a training method you've heard about against those 10 principles and again that's a really really good system. John's is quicker so just to give you a quick idea of whether or not you think you might want to go ahead with trialing something then I'd run through these three training rules. So the first one is I can't get hurt. So as the trainer I can't get hurt. So you look at a system and you think right you know could I get hurt doing that. Let's take for example um, tying the horse up when you first get on. So some people do this, they actually hobble the horse or they tie the horse to something for the first mounting when they're breaking the horse in. Now, I don't think there's much that's more dangerous than that. So the answer to that, could I get hurt is, oh, definitely, yes, I definitely could get hurt. So I wouldn't do that. The second question is, could the horse get hurt? Now. Obviously, if I get hurt, then it's game over because I can't come out tomorrow and do something else, do something differently, and I might be dead. So really, you know, so that's a terrible thing. If the horse can get hurt, though, again, you're you're setting yourself back, you know, so far, and you're maybe doing irreparable damage to the horse. So it's very, very important that your training method doesn't involve anything that could potentially hurt the horse. Now let's give you another classic example here again of breaking in the horse. Sometimes when people start horses under saddle, they do it in the round pen. And they have a tendency just to throw the saddle on the back of the horse and let the horse work it out or get on with it. And what this involves, of course, is the horse tearing around the round pen, bucking like a lunatic. Um, because it hasn't been properly habituated to wearing a saddle, which shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes to do properly, but some people feel they don't have the time to do that. So they risk the horse's welfare by just throwing it on the back of the horse and letting the horse just work it out, which the horse rarely does. So the potential um, damage that you can do there, of course, includes the horse kicking up um, and kicking the round pen and doing some nasty damage to its legs. The horse could also fall over, the horse could break a bone doing that. Um, the horse can also, and I've seen this before with horses, where they've um, pulled a muscle in their back, so right along their top line from all that bucking. Horses don't like to buck. Horses that um, are running and bucking are very, very afraid. Um, and so again, you're teaching the horse that flight and bucking is a possible answer to something that it's afraid of. So you're introducing that into your training and introducing it to the list of possibilities that the horse could offer you as responses next time you ask it for something new. So 
so many potential hazards with that little exercise that uh, rule number two would keep you well away from that. The third rule is it's, it's the one that's a little bit ambiguous and can be misunderstood I feel and it says that the horse should be calmer after the lesson than before and if you take this to mean that the horse actually understands and learnt the lesson therefore it's less anxious than it was before then I'm sure that that is the intended meaning of the rule however I think some people look at that rule and perhaps they've run their horse around the round pen for an hour or something and the horse is of course exhausted and they think oh look the horse is calmer than it was before because it, when it first came in it had its hair, head in the air and its tail was up and it was running around screaming now it's just standing next to me um, yes the horse is exhausted the horse is not necessarily calmer or less anxious than it was if the horse has been engaged in the lesson and learnt the lesson and is now feeling more confident I think that was the intended meaning of that rule I have another one where I say, look, would you do this to your three-year-old child? And, and that's an interesting one. So let's take um, lunging the horse before you ride. Okay, so the ride is going to be the lesson. So let's say the lesson is mathematics. And you've got your three-year-old child. I don't know what three-year-old children do. It's been a long time since I had a three-year-old. Well, it's been about 22 years. Anyway, um, let's say that the lesson is mathematics and your lesson for your horse as a, a as a as an example might be teaching hindquarter control so there you've got the two things now with the horse would you lunge that horse to get the edge off which is something people do quite often the edge off get the buck out of it um, before you ride it and teach it the lesson and a, a lot of people would do that would you by the same token take your three or five year old child if it's doing mathematics probably five um, out into the playing fields and run it round and round in circles before trying to teach it the lesson no you wouldn't do that so it's a good idea probably not to exhaust your horse mentally and physically before you try and teach it something either because it's not going to be really um, receptive to learning by that stage so there, that's my little quick rule would you do it to your child and that works quite well for me if I look at something just quickly um, so let's look at two different um, examples and we'll look at the three at uh, John's three rules of training for the two examples so one that I've been asked about in the last couple of days is trailer loading and somebody had watched my free training there's a link to that above um, and one of the lessons in there is a trailer loading lesson and they said, oh, you know, I actually really liked your lesson um, because I'd been taught that what you're supposed to do is teach the horse that outside the trailer is the bad place to be and inside the trailer is the good place to be. But you weren't doing that. And I, I like your method better because the horse seems to learn it better and is calmer and it seems less dangerous. So the method that she was talking about was where you run the horse around and around and around in circles and make outside the trailer really quite scary. Quite often this entails, you know, trotting and cantering circles on the outside over the ramp and goodness knows what else. And the horse ends up terribly anxious outside the trailer. And then when it gets onto the trailer, it's allowed to rest and relax. And so the idea is that the horse is supposed to learn that being on the trailer is nice and being off the trailer is scary or nasty or hard work, I think even it might be the idea, but it ends up being, you know, the really scary place to be. My method um, is making, asking the front foot to go forward and backwards. I only talk to one foot, the left front, and I teach that to go forwards and I teach it to go backwards and as it happens the trailer's in the way but we have a set idea of what we want to achieve. See I don't know whether the horse thinks that the trailer is nice or nasty. I don't know really what is going on in the horse's mind. What I do know is whether or not the left front foot is going backwards and forwards when it's cued to do so. So the big difference there is I have something measurable whereas the the other method doesn't so I can measure I can see whether or not the horse is stepping forwards and backwards when cued whether the horse thinks that the trailer is 
the nice place to be or the nasty place to be. I really, I have no measure of that. Um, I also, you know, can the horse get hurt? Well, yes, quite badly, quite quickly. Um, can I get hurt? Absolutely. Is the horse likely to be calmer after the lesson than before? No, the horse is likely to be injured and exhausted. So all of those things tell me my answer to that first uh, method of trailer loading with the outside the trailer being the nasty place to be is, is dangerous in every way and I wouldn't touch it. Um, another, another thing is round pen use. Now, I don't use the round pen um, very much anymore myself. I do a little bit to teach something specific, um, but I don't teach round pen use a lot because it's very difficult not to chase the horse in the round pen. So I was teaching people to use it, but they were finding it actually really hard not to chase the horse. So I use it now for really specific purposes. A lot of people use it to teach respect. Now, the problem with that is that respect is really hard to measure. And we'll go through, you know, could you get her teaching respect in the round pen? Well, the horse is loose. So if you're putting the horse under a lot of pressure, it's possible that the horse cantering around the outside of the pen can come really close to you and kick you in the head on the way past. If you put it under too much pressure, that is really possible that that would happen, especially if the horse is in canter. Um, so could the horse get hurt? Yes, absolutely, because it is very hard not to chase a horse in a round pen. Um, so the horse could easily get exhausted. If you've ever seen horses being worked in the round pen where people are supposedly getting respect, what you will notice with most of those horses, certainly all of the horses that I've seen that have been going through these lessons of getting respect, um, you'll see they have their ears pinned, they usually are tossing their heads, the horses are quite distressed. Now, if you continue as a trainer in the middle to ignore those signs, the horse will have no choice but to get more aggressive. Because what you're saying is, oh, I can see that your ears are pinned. I can see that you're, you know, looking at me like that and trying to move me. And I can see that you're swishing your tail and you're tossing your head and you're very unhappy, but I'm ignoring that. So the horse then goes, well, I'm gonna to have to come past and kick you in the head because you can't see any of my other signals. You're ignoring all of my other signals. So I have to get more aggressive. Um, the other problem with respect is that there is no way of measuring it. You know, how do I know whether the horse respects me or not? What I really want to do when I get to round pen is teach the horse something. The great thing to teach is all about negative reinforcement. So what I do in the round pen is I teach the horse two types of turns, inside turns turning towards me and outside turns turning away from me. So we look at inside turns for a moment. That I can teach the horse that by putting some pressure on the horse and using my body language to move about and get the horse to look at me and then turn to the inside and pass by me in that way. Now, it's very, very specific. So the pressure that I'm using is just my body language. So I'm moving to get the horse to move and I release that pressure when the horse moves. I can see whether or not the horse has done that. I don't have to guess whether the horse respects me because I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in having the horse understand that I move its feet and so I control speed and direction. And if the horse is going the speed I've asked it to and the direction I've asked it to, I know that it's under my stimulus control. So respect, I'll give you a link to the problems with talking about dominance and, and respect. Um, and I'll pop it in the comments later when I get home, back from the beach. Um, and, and we'll have a talk about that um, another time because it's a very important thing and it's something that's overused and misused a lot. And I think it can really lead to a risk in welfare when we start talking about respect um, in that way. So that's it for me from today. That is just a little something, a few little rules. So encourage you to actually go out and start training because you will be surprised at how much fun, how easy it is. Especially those of you who said, oh, I didn't want to do it wrong, so I didn't do anything. Go and pick up the free training at the link above and, um, and get started. Get started today 
Anyway, I will see you tomorrow with Tuesday's training. Bye for now.